The Rural Report, here on 999 ABC Broken Hill. Have a horse, you can either put shoes on it or you can let it go barefoot. And we're going to hear a little bit about uh, one local horseman has recently done a course looking at the barefoot option. So what it's all about, how it works, what he's learnt. Quite interesting. Something you never really think about, is it? Well, it isn't. Yeah, I suppose if you're a horse owner, you do. But for us, you know... Definitely not. So Non-horse owners? Non-horse owners, yes. We're a breed unto ourselves. We are. <laughs> well, if you're a horse owner, you can choose for your horse to wear shoes or go barefoot. Local horseman Richard Woolley has recently returned from an intensive two-week course in Tasmania looking at the barefoot option. Now, I stopped by his place Chicken in Broken ear. Hill where he showed me how he'd been taught to care for the hoops. Yep. Just check to see the state of the, the hoof, and I know my guys up here compared to the horses down in Tasmania, completely different. They're like concrete up here, and they're like trees down there, so you've got to be very careful with a, a knife or a rust down there. A bit too hard, and you take too much off, and it takes too long to grow back, so you can injure them if you if you go too quick at it. But what I was doing out there was I just on, on one hoof out there, and then uh, Jerry, he was just a little bit, bit long in the heels and his quarters had grown a fair way, but he had nice toe callus and still had a nice roll on a dorsal wall of his hoof. And that's bad, for I've been hanging around with some English people, as you can tell by that. His hoof, I mean. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was only, I suppose, ten minutes and um, just rasp everything in, in accordance with the, his particular foot because um, I don't, don't think there's any set angles or that sort of thing that can be applied to, to all hooves. Each hoof on the horse is different and each horse is different, so you've just got to you know, play it as it comes. Tell me a little bit about why you decided along your sort of career with horses to go barefoot. Uh, going barefoot came about because when I originally got into horses in Broken Hill, they were two Clydesdales and, and there were um, half a dozen barriers around town, I was told, so I thought I wouldn't have any trouble getting them shod. And, with a phone call to, to one or another when they found out that they were Clydesdales, a few of them either ended up with bad backs or couldn't afford to get injured, so that sort of told me something. I thought it might have a bit of a problem here. But a chap by the name of Ricky Townsend, and he's pretty well known around the area, he was out there straight away and fixed them up for me. And But um, Rick's a little bit older than me, probably a bit fitter. i better say that, he'll belt me with his rasp. But uh, it got to the point where the big fella I had, the gelding, we were going down the road one day, and Clydesdale's a cow, what they call cow hocked, and, and he had this habit of uh, one of his back legs banging up against the coronary band on the other, and, and the shoes at that stage weighed a kilo each, and this particular day he kicked his other foot out from underneath him and he started to bleed from the... Uh, coronary band, so I un- unhitched the horses and walked them home, and um, I took the shoes off that day, and um, and I've never had a shoe on a horse since. And there's still, I guess, a range of opinions on whether horses should have shoes or they shouldn't, or just different ideas. I understand that's still the case. That's still the case, and I guess you've got to, as they say, there's horses for courses, but you've got to look at the the reason, I guess, why people um, still run their horses with shoes and why people are going barefoot. And, I think a lot of the times that um, white people run with shoes is if they're in a racing industry, for instance, the thoroughbred industry or the harness industry, I believe it's compulsory to wear shoes, so you've got no option. Um, although they're working on the thoroughbred industry at the moment to see if they can change that. Um, at one stage they were just wearing tips. Um, they were running barefoot and just putting about a, a three-inch tip on the, on the hoof for the horse to run. And the other thing is that I guess it's just tradition that people get a horse and think, oh, I better get some shoes on it. And I guess that's when I got my first horse, that was the first thing I thought, oh, I got a horse now I'm going to get some shoes on it. But when you understand understand the mechanism of the hoof, appreciate how it works, in my particular case, and would never ever put a lump of steel on, uh, on a horse's hoof cool. again. I must have been wrong. Mm-hmm. And that takes the, the peripheral loading off the hoof. Mm. 